Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 4th of October 2020 and we're asking the question, are we reaching peak gold? Let's take a look. This is the first video in a series where, at least according to a Bloomberg contributor, we are not, or at least not yet. Now, before we look at peak gold, we wish to remind listeners that we publish our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 2nd of October, where we highlighted that the gold price has risen again this past week and seems to be settling around the $1,900 level. The question, of course, being... For how long? Now we've placed a link to that video in the description box below. Now as we've mentioned, this is going to be part one of a series of podcasts putting forward differing points of view as to whether we are close to reaching peak gold or whether we've reached it already. But first we need to try and quantify if we can how much gold exists on earth in the first place or at least that which may be accessible with the technology we currently have. Now, for many years, we've heard the advocates for investing in gold constantly refer to the fact that gold is a rare commodity, which is true, and that it's not cheap to extract. True, but that depends on the current price, which will determine whether it's cheap enough or not, and also the technologies that are available to carry out the job. And we also hear that we're running out because there is a limited supply in the Earth's crust. Now it is this latter point we wish to contend with just a little. Yes, gold is a finite resource, or at least as far as we can tell. There are numerous theories of how gold appeared on Earth. The two most popular are one that asteroids which were formed in a similar way to the Earth, crashed into our planet and deposited gold into the Earth's crust. The second is the impact from massive asteroids fracturing the crust and bringing gold up from the Earth's core, which was already there. Now, over thousands of years, gold, along with other metals in the Earth's crust, became compressed into veins. Over time, these gold veins eroded, placing other deposits and gold nuggets in new locations on the Earth's surface and in the seas, which is why it's been readily accessible, or relatively readily accessible today. So we think it's fair to say that unless science proves otherwise, gold is finite. The issue, though, is that we literally do not know how much gold exists in the Earth's crust. However, that said, scientists can at least make a reasonable estimate of how much gold is accessible cost-effectively. However, as we mentioned earlier, cost-effectively also depends on what the price of gold is and whether it's worth the extraction or not. Now, we shall look at a Bloomberg article published just a few days ago which seems to suggest that we are not going to run out of gold anytime soon. So let's take a look at that article. Bloomberg article, dated 1st of October 2020, by David Fickling. Headline, We're a long, long way from running out of gold. There's still good reason to invest in it, though. Here's one potential reason to add some bullion coins or bars to your investment portfolio. They're not making any more of them. All the gold that's ever been mined would fit into a cube with edges 22 metres long, small enough to fit into three Olympic-sized swimming pools. Each year, miners and pawnbrokers add another 4,000 to 5,000 metric tonnes to an existing 197,000 576 ton pile. But jewellery demand alone uses up about half of that. 
with the metal hitting a record $2,075 a troy ounce in August. The concern we're heading towards peak gold has reared its head again. The industry needs to commission 8 million ounces of projects by 2025 to maintain last year's production levels, consultants Wood Mackenzie wrote in June, requiring some $37 billion of capital investment. Mine production fell last year for the first time in more than a decade. Even the British Broadcasting Corporation has been asking whether we're at risk of running out. At the core of the concern is a long-standing trend in the gold mining industry. The percentage of gold in ore reserves is falling from more than 10 grams per tonne in the late 1960s to barely more than 1 gram per tonne nowadays. Those concentrations are extraordinarily low, equivalent to grinding up and separating a Statue of Liberty's worth of ore to recover a teaspoon of precious metal. At some point the grade must get so poor that it becomes impossible to recover the gold economically. The thing is, we don't know when that will be and all the evidence indicates that we're still a long way from finding out. Take Newcrest Mining Limited's Cadia East Mine, 200 kilometres to the west of Sydney. The grade there is just 0.4 grams per tonne. More than two Statue of, Statue of Liberty's worth per teaspoon. And yet the mine is one of the world's most profitable, with costs of $160 per ounce, which would deliver a margin of more than 90% at current gold prices. Two factors drive that. One is economies of scale. Cady is one of the world's top 10 gold mines measured by output. Since the dawn of the mining industry, grades of almost every mineral have been falling because, by definition, the highest grade, most easily discovered resources, are the ones that get exploited first. The growth of the sector has always depended upon better, higher volume extraction technologies offsetting this fact. The place where many of the highest grade major gold deposits are still to be found, South Africa, is increasingly a backwater. That's because it's simply so difficult to extract ore from sweltering tunnels kilometres underground using hand-operated tools. By comparison, the immense blasting and dump truck operations used to exploit lower grade mines in Siberia, Oceania, and Nevada are far more efficient. The other factor is that most gold doesn't occur on its own. Indeed, the best deposits globally are porphyry, a mineral that's also one of the world's biggest sources of copper. The operator of the world's biggest gold mine isn't a gold miner at all, but copper producer Freeport MacMoran Inc whose Grasberg pit on the Indonesian side of New Guinea produced nearly twice as much gold in 2018 as its nearest rival, Polyus, PJSC's Olympiada. At Newcrest's Cadia, production costs are so low because, for every ounce of gold that's mined, you get about 140 kilograms or 309 pounds of copper worth $900 or so at current prices. While the issues of mine depletion highlighted by Wood Mackenzie are real, high gold prices like those we're seeing at the moment are exactly the circumstances that will encourage more exploration and development activity to make up the shortfall. Though people have been digging up gold for seven millennia, it's constantly being discovered in the most unexpected places. Mining of the yellow metal in Australia's Victoria state all but ceased a century ago after the veins that drove its nation-building 19th century gold rush were tapped out. Then, in 2015, Kirkland Lake Gold Limited discovered a new ore body near its uninspiring Fosterville mine site and realised it was sitting on top 
of one of the world's highest grade deposits, causing its market capitalization to grow nearly 100 fold in five years. The same year, a unit of Sahojin Mining Industry Co. discovered a new deposit two kilometers below the surface of the Bohai Sea off the coast of northeast China's Shandong province. With some 212 metric tons of proven and pro probable reserves, it's now one of the world's largest gold deposits. There's no reason to think that trend is about to break. About half of the world's gold has been mined since 1976, and if anything the pace is accelerating as grades fall. Worldwide gold production is up by about a third of the past decade, far more than the 15% increase in oil output. The best reason for investing in gold is still that it provides diversification to an investment portfolio. Not that the world doesn't have enough of it. One day we may run out of gold. We're a long, long way from that moment now. So, the author of the article is of the opinion that gold will be with us and will still continue to be mined for some time to come. Now we're sure that the cost of extraction, as indicated in his example, was a surprise to most people reading this. It was even to us. As we've all often been told that the cost of extraction ranged anything realistically from $900 to $1,200, with few exceptions either side. Now, next week we shall delve into this a little further and add some meat and figures to the bones, so to speak. Now, with regards to the current price of gold, we urge you to watch out for tomorrow's announcement in the United States of the Market Services PMI for September and the ISM Services Index for September, as these figures may just move the needle, albeit marginally. Meanwhile, do share your thoughts and your ideas below, and thank you for listening, and we ask very kindly that should you not be a current subscriber, that you consider being so by pressing the subscribe button and also the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. And our sister channel, Richard and Greg, a link to which is also shown in the description box below, we've placed in another video, so we've done two this week, where we discuss empires and dynasties. The first part of a series of videos on that subject. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.